Hello and welcome to Craft with Sarah and day 14 of the Christmas Craft Countdown where I'm releasing a new Christmas craft every day for 20 days. Today we're going to be making layered greetings cards and they are going to feature either a dog or a cat. But the best thing is you get to choose what breed of dog or cat to put on the cards. So what I've done for this project is I've shared with you inside the Christmas Craft Countdown a blank SVG of the gift with the paws on top. And then I'll show you how to choose any of my dog or cat SVGs and then put the head on top. This is really nice because it means you can customize your card to match a particular dog. I've got over 180 different dog SVGs to choose from and 20 different cats. And because you need one of these SVGs to make this card, I'm not gonna make you go and buy one, oh no. Check the download folder that comes with the little gift SVG and there is a voucher in there for you to go to my SVG shop, which is shop.craftwithsarah.com and you can choose any dog or cat to download for free. So let's see how to get that voucher and how to get the little present file. First, you need to download the cutting file to make this project. If you aren't already signed up to the Christmas Craft Countdown, go to craftwithsarah.com forward slash Christmas 2021 to join. If you have already purchased the countdown, go to craftwithsarah.com forward slash login to log in to your account and access all of the Christmas Craft Countdown files. Once logged in, click into the Christmas Craft Countdown. Scroll down the page and all the files will become available on the date specified. The files do not expire so you can download them at any time. After downloading the cutting files, you'll need to unzip the folder that they come in. If you aren't sure how to do that, check the link in the description of this video, which contains instructions on how to unzip folders on Windows computers, Macs and Android and iPhone devices. Next, we need to upload the files into Cricut Design Space. I've already uploaded the dog that I've chosen, which is the Shih Tzu, because I have Shih Tzu, so obviously that was going to be my choice. But I'll show you how to upload the actual gift template SVG, which you will have downloaded from the Christmas Craft Countdown page. So once you've started a new file in Cricut Design Space, head on over to Upload, and then press Upload Image. You can then either click Browse to find the file on your computer, or you can drag and drop it in. For Design Space, you need to use the SVG file and all of my SVG files start with SVG underscore in the file name. So that's the one you're looking for. Don't try and upload any of the other ones because they won't work. You want the one which starts SVG in the file name. So I'm going to drag and drop mine in. And then this is what it should look like. So you should see all of the layers on top of each other like this. If yours looks different and instead of it all appearing in position, you see each individual part of the design completely separate, that means that you've accidentally uploaded the wrong file. So if that is the case, just click cancel down on the bottom and try again and make sure you upload the one which starts SVG. But this is looking correct, so I'm going to go down to the bottom right and press upload. And that will upload it to the cloud and now it's available in my recent uploads. So I can click it and then I will add it to my canvas. But because I've got the Shih Tzu design here, I'm going to click that one too and put them both in at the same time. If you haven't already uploaded your dog or cat SVG, do that too so that we can start making our little custom design. So let's press add to canvas and then that will put both designs onto my page. Okay, so here they are. And the dog with the gift kind of comes in a bit small, so I just make it a little bigger. What we need to do is take the head from this Shih Tzu and then we'll put it onto the body over here. So I do have a whole separate video on how to remove the heads from my layered dog and cat SVGs. I'll link to that in the description of this video, but I will go through it quickly in this one too. So you can see on the right hand side, you've got all of the different layers. Click each one and you'll get a box around it to show you what it is. And for this one, it's a tail. We don't need that one. So I've clicked the layer and then I just press delete on my keyboard. And then underneath that, there's another tail layer so I can delete that one. 
The next one is the nose and then we have the beard, eyes, tongue and all of these head layers which we need to keep. And then it moves on to the chest, so this big white area here. Now you could keep that if you wanted to instead of using the solid circle but I'm going to remove it so delete those ones and then just keep going down and delete all of those body layers and then you're left with just the head. I'm now going to click onto the, um, the dog with the centre hat so our kind of body that we're going to use and then over on the right click ungroup. And what that's done is it's separated the hat from the rest of the design. So I can move the hat out the way for now. And then let's bring in the Shih Tzu head. At the moment, this is appearing underneath the body and we want it to be on top. So go arrange with the head selected and then center front. And now you can play about with the sizing to make it look kind of correct in comparison with the paw size. Depending on which dog that you've chosen, it might go a little bit higher and look better or you might want it lower, but just play about with the sizes and the positioning until you're happy with how that's looking on there. When you're happy with the positioning of the head, it's time to change the colours of the feet and the body to match the design. You can also change the colours of the dog if that's not what you wanted. So again, I do have a separate video on how to change the colours. I'll link to that in the description of this video. This one does kind of look like my dog Freddy, so I'm going to keep it in these colours. But I do want to change the body and the paws to match. So to do that, click over to the colour sink right on the very top right of the screen. This splits all of your layers into the different colours. So now you can see all the individual colours that are being used. For these brown ones, so the body and the paws, I'm going to drag them onto one of the colours that are already used on the Shih Tzu face and then they'll be cut from that same colour. So just click and drag and then let go. And I think that looks nice. You might want to choose a different colour for the paws and the body. But again, that's completely up to you based on the type of dog that you're doing and the colouring of that dog that you're trying to replicate. I'm going to click back to layers over here on the top right because now it's time to add the Santa hat. Now this is appearing underneath the Shih Tzu, but this is another one we want to go on top. So let's go arrange and then centre front. Now the hat's appearing on top of the Shih Tzu and I can just play about with the size and the rotation again until it's looking right. If your dog has two pointy ears going up, then what I like to do is to just kind of rotate it like this and hang it over one of the ears so you've still got the other pointy one um, showing just because otherwise if you cover them both up then it kind of detracts from the overall look of the dog a little bit. I think this needs to be a bit bigger. There we go, just have it balancing on top. <laughs> That's really cute. One thing to bear in mind with um, how this is going to work is we will need to be a bit clever with our 3D foam pads when we're adding the Santa hat on top so that it sits level because this bottom part of the hat is going to go on top of the head which is going to be quite raised from the surface of the card or the shadow box or whatever it is you're putting it in um, whereas the top part of the hat isn't going to have anything underneath it there's no layers up here so we'll need to double up or maybe even triple up our foam pads but don't worry I'll show you exactly how to do that in a moment when we go through how to put this together. Finally, before we can cut this out, we need to size it so that it will fit where we're going to be putting it. To do that, we need to group all of our layers together. So press select all, and then at the top of the layers panel, press group. Now, when you drag and drop the size, everything changes together and it all changes in proportion. If you want to set this to a certain height, Go into the width and the height boxes at the top and then you can simply type the height or the width to so choose one of them. Make sure the little padlock icon is closed 
and then swipe down the width is four inches, press enter on the keyboard and that will resize it and it keeps the height in proportion. When you're happy with the size, you can just click make it over on the top right of the screen and then follow the instructions to cut everything out from cardstock. If you want to help save your paper a little bit, you can sort of move things around on your mats by clicking and dragging. And if you need to change the paper size, do that in the little drop downs over on the left. You will need to change the size for every single different color, um, but you can also drag and drop them as well. So when you're happy with all the positioning, press continue, cut everything out from cardstock, and then we'll see how to stick it all together. Before I show you how to stick everything together, I just wanted to go into what you can do if you can't get the face looking right on the body template. So for example, with this golden retriever, I can't quite get it looking right. I mean, I guess that's almost there. I could probably get away with that, but something about it just doesn't quite go. If I raise it any higher, then you see the top of the oval and that kind of loses um, some of the detail. Actually, that's kind of okay, but I think it could be a little bit better. So if you need to, you can extend this oval with different shapes from Cricut Design Space. Either you can go into shapes and choose any one of those, or what I prefer is to go into images and then type in tier. And then when it loads, <laughs> you get lots of different teardrop shapes. So choose one of those and press add to canvas. And then these tend to let you make it look a little bit more realistic because they've got more of a taper at the top. So if I make that the same color, drag the head above it and also the uh, present layer. So then we can have a little play and try and get that looking more realistic. So it's a bit hard to see with the, um, the other one still there. But what I'm trying to do is just give it more of a neck to that golden retriever shape and make it a little bit wider at the bottom. So I think that looks better than what was there before. And what I need to do now is merge that oval shape, the outer one, with what's already in the middle. So I'll hide the head by pressing the eye icon next to the head group, and then close up all the layers by pressing the little arrow. Now we need to click on the group with all of the gift layers and press ungroup. Scroll down to the bottom until you find the one that had that original body shape on it. Press shift on your keyboard and choose your new teardrop layer. And then down the bottom, press weld. That will join those two together. So now you see it's just one continuous shape. But what it's done is it's moved that layer right to the top. So we need to click and drag it back underneath that final green. Now we can go up and turn the head back on. Just play about to double check you're happy. And then I also need to change these poor colors. Then I can simply add the hat. There we go. And then regroup everything back together by dragging a box around it or pressing select all and then pressing group. So that's just a little extra hack for if you want to change the body shape to match the head that you're using a little bit better. Here are all my layers cut out and then I've just roughly placed them where they're going to go so that they're all in order. I can make sure I haven't missed anything out and also I can check that I'm happy with the colours. We're going to be sticking these together as three separate pieces. So we're going to have the body and the gift as one, the face as another, and then the Santa hat as the third. Then I'll show you how to combine all three of them on your greetings card or wherever it is you're gonna make it, for example, in a shadow box or a photo frame, so that all the layers line up properly and you get a beautiful final appearance. Let's start with the Santa hat as that's the easiest one to put together. Now for this, I'm just gonna use glue for all of the layers. 
You could use foam pads for the two white pieces, but because I don't want my greetings card to get too thick, because that'll make it more expensive to post, I'm going to glue these ones. I will be using foam pads for some of the layers, but for the hat, I'm going to keep it all as one. So I'm just turning my little pieces upside down and adding some glue. The glue I use is called Kalal. It's a really good glue because it doesn't bend or wrinkle the cardstock like some other glues can do. And then I just put it into these teeny tiny little bottles, which makes it much easier to put onto my project. So I'm just going to add another little bit in there and then stick on the little bubble on the edge of the hat and then I can move that over to one side for now. Next I'll move on to the body. So let's have a look at what we've got. We've got our body layer which is the bottom and then We've got three green layers, one dark one, one light one, and then another dark one, and then two pieces of ribbon. I'll start with the three green pieces, and I'm going to glue all of these to each other. So first I will turn over the light green part with the Christmas trees and add some glue to the back. Again, you could use foam pads for some of these layers if you want to but I'm trying to keep my card so that it will still post as a regular letter and not need a large letter stamp. So in the UK, which is where I'm from, the cost of the stamp that you need to put on your um, envelope varies based on uh, size and also the thickness. So I don't want this to be too expensive to post. And then this one I'm going to glue on top and this makes the lid of the box. If this was going in a shadow box instead of on a greetings card, I'd probably use foam pads for this layer just to make that box pop out a little bit. If you look at the assembly instructions PDF that's included with the file, it tells you which of the layers are optional with glue and foam so that you can make a choice on... Um, how 3D you want your design to end up. Okay, so next let's move on to the bow and I'll glue these two layers together to start. So the dark red layer is just adding that extra bit of detail onto the bow. Now we can start putting all the different elements together. Here is my base, which is going to be the um, body of the dog poking out. And then I use foam pads to stick the green section on top. Turn it upside down. The foam pads I'm using are from Dot and Dab. I like these ones because the tops peel off really easily, so it's nice and quick to use them. And then these ones are um, really, really small. They're only five millimeters by five millimeters which means it's great for layered designs. So previously, if you've watched any of my other videos, you'll see I used really big ones and I had to cut them smaller with scissors, but I've just discovered they do smaller ones, so this is saving me a lot of time. Here's one that I've already started. So you can see just how small these are. And now you want to make sure you add a good amount of foam pads to this because it's quite a big piece and you need to make sure that as well as putting parts all around the edge, you've also got some in the middle because if you didn't put any in the middle here, then the card is likely to sag in that middle. So your present, your gift will just not look as good because it will dip in the middle instead of being nice and straight. Peeling the tops off of these foam pads and then I can line this up against that bottom body layer and then gently let go and then push down when I'm happy with that positioning. Next I'll add the ribbon and again turn it upside down and add some foam pads. 
You don't need quite as many this time because the piece is smaller, but I still like to put a good amount on there to make sure it will stick well. Especially because it's got to go in an envelope and I'll probably end up posting it. So just a couple of extra foam pads than you might normally put on will just help protect it on its journey. Then we've got the little paws. I'm going to put my foam straight onto the screen. And that is the body section done. Now all we've got left is the head. Now the way you stick your head layers together will vary based on which design you chose. And if you look in the folder that contain the uh, cutting file for the dog that you got, um, there is a PDF in there called assembly guide to PDF. So if you open that up, it will tell you the order to stick all of the layers on the dog head. And it'll also tell you which ones to use foam for and which ones to use glue. But bear in mind that is if you're putting it in a shadow box or something where it doesn't really matter if it's lots of layers. What I'm going to do for my card is I'm actually going to do it a bit differently and glue more of the layers than I would have done otherwise. But again, that's all completely up to you. So this Shih Tzu is quite a few layers. I've already stuck the eyes down because I was worried about losing them. I probably should have done the nose and the tongue as well. So that's all of my layers. Here is my bottom one. So I think what I will do is glue this one. And then I'll glue the next one as well. And then I use foam pads for that uh, little nose section. It will still be raised out a little bit because I'm going to raise it up against the body in a moment when we start putting the card together. So it will have some depth to it. I always think these dogs look so funny until they get all of the details on them. When they've just got eyes, they look so strange. Okay, I've just turned this piece over so that I can glue in the tongue. Just check how that looks. There we go. And I'm gonna wait for that to dry just a second whilst I put the foam pads on. There we go, so it's just got that little bit of dimension. That looks really cute. And then finally, I've got the nose. So, oh no, a bubble. Why do bubbles always come out of the glue when you're trying to put on the tiniest amount? It's like they know, the glue knows. <laughs> okay, there we go. Little nose, that was a bit too much glue really, but never mind. There is my little Shih Tzu face. This looks so much like my dog Freddy. Okay, now we have our three separate pieces. It's time to start thinking about where they're going to go. I'm putting my Shih Tzu onto an A5 card and I've already got a pre-made card blank here. So before I do anything else, I just wanna check that this is definitely gonna fit. I don't need to go up a card size or anything like that but it's looking like this will be just fine. Yeah, awesome. So that is how it will look. But before I stick all of this on, I'm gonna add some background papers. So I'll go ahead and do that, and then I'll show you how to put all of your three pieces together. Here's my card all decorated and ready for the dog to go on top. So all I did was I cut some Christmas scrapbook paper and then a slightly bigger rectangle of gold glitter card just to kind of create a little border around it. It's really shiny and pretty. So that will be the base. Next, line up your sections. Just place them on the card. Don't stick anything yet. Just get everything where you want it to go. I quite like putting the heads on at a little bit of an angle so it looks like they're tilting their heads. And then that will go on top. Okay. 
So when you're happy with the positioning, the first thing to stick down is the present layer, the body. And we're going to be using glue for this. So just kind of work out a reference point of where it goes so you know where to put it again. So mine's just before the star star on this tree. Or you could mark it with a tiny bit of pencil if you want to. Okay. Add my glue to the back. And you do want to use glue for this, not foam. It'll just make it easier in a minute to work out the foam pads for the head and the hat. So lots of glue on there so it will have a firm stick and then line it up where I had it so just before those stars started on those bottom trees. And there we go. Okay. Right, so next we're going to add the head and put foam pads on the back of this so it stands out a little bit from the body. And that's one of the reasons that we glued the body. It's so this is flat and flush against our background paper or our cardstock. So one layer of foam on the back of the head will make this perfectly level across the body and the scrapbook piece. I turn my little Shih Tzu's head upside down and add the foam. Just like before, I want to make sure there's some in the middle as well as around the edge. And as this is quite a heavy piece with all the layers on the other side, that's why I've put on so many foam pads. Make sure it really stays stuck. Okay, so let's line this up. I want that slight head tilt. You could put it on straight if you prefer. But I quite like that. That's something my dog does a lot and it's very cute. Okay, so if you wanted to, you could leave it like this without the Santa hat on. But I'm going to put mine on. And this is where we need to be a little bit clever. I'm going to put this on so that it sits flush against the dog's head. But if I was just to put a tiny bit of glue on the head and then glue that down... The top bit will just fall to the back of the card and it won't look very good. Now because I glued all of the head layers of the Shih Tzu here, this one's actually going to be quite easy to work out. So I'll show you this one and then I'll show you a different one where we needed to be a little bit more clever. So just in case you had maybe ears that popped up um, that were higher than the rest of the head, I'll show you how to work out the amount of foam pads you need in a moment. But for this one, what I need to do is add glue to this part of the hat that's going to sit on top of the head and then put foam pads on the hat that's going above the card. And because my head is one layer of foam pads up from the base, I need one layer of foam pad under that hat. If my head that I was sticking this bit to was two layers of foam pads, so let's say I'd put foam on this paler layer instead of gluing it, then I'd need to put two layers of foam pad under the hat, so I'd need to stick one on top of the other, and that's to make it flat with the top uh, layer that you're sticking it to. So I hope that makes sense. So let's turn this over, and I'll add the foam to the top of the hat, and a little bit in the bauble. So here's my foam. And then where this is going to sit, think about where this is going to go, think like that, so I can just add a bit of glue along the top of the head. Be careful you don't add any glue where the hat isn't going to be, otherwise you'll see it, but that will be all hidden. So now I've got my foam on half of it, and then the other half will be stuck by this glue. Line that up. And then when you're happy with the positioning, hold the glue bit down and use your other hand to stick all those foam pads. And now you can see this is all wonderfully even where it's got the glue bit and the foam. It's making it flat along that top. 
So there is my cute little Shih Tzu card all finished. And then here are a few other examples to show you what it looks like with different dogs. So this one is the Golden Retriever. And this is one where it was a little bit more complicated because the ears are higher up than the rest of the head. So when I stuck the, um, the hat on, I glued it to the top of this ear and to the top of the snout. So just a tiny bit of glue on there. And then for the part which goes on the background, I took my foam pads, put them on the back, and then took another foam pad for each of them and stuck it on top. So I was doubling it up. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see if I turn it, probably not. But there's two layers of foam pads under there so that this side of the hat becomes the same height as the bit that's over the ears. And then final example, I've done a pit bull. Here we go. So this one, um, I think it was just one, oh no, it was two layers again on this one. So this part of the hat has two layers of foam pads. And then um, for this part, it's glued to the top of the head where the ears are. And then I just tucked the bit of the nose underneath the rim of the hat. So that's three different options with three different dogs. And I really like this card. I think everyone I know that has a dog is going to be getting a card with their dog on the front for Christmas. So I really hope that you like these cards as well. I hope you enjoyed this video on how to make a layered greetings card with a dog or cat of your choice. Don't forget to get the files, head to your Craft with Sarah account after signing up to the Christmas Craft Countdown. Not only do you get the little gift SVG, but you can choose any one of my dog or cats to download for free. I'll be back again tomorrow with another Christmas craft, but until then, thank you for watching. Bye!